Good morning, you extravagant person. <laughs> you. What is it today? Is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday already. Happy hump day. Thought it was Tuesday. That's a nice surprise. You know, I'm still waiting for the day when I think it's Monday, but it's actually Friday. I just love it when that happens. It hasn't happened yet for me, though. I gotta go to Kenora today. It might be a bit of a long day. I left Weasel at home today. Uh, he can relax at home. Britt's gonna be home all day, so uh, he can spend the day with, with the family. Get some exercise in the yard and get some sunshine. And uh, me and all of you, we're gonna go to Kenora in Ontario. We're gonna pick up uh, our culverts or whatever we're picking up there. We're gonna bring them to Winkler, Manitoba. Out in Stanley Municipality. Yonzi. We're gonna bring them their stuff. We're gonna get that done today yet. And that'll take up our whole day. And then before you know it, it'll be Thursday. So let's focus on Wednesday. another beautiful sunrise here to start the day just get into our truck I've got to hook onto a step deck with a riser I see one right here to my left I'm gonna snag that one if no one snags it before I leave here's Anthony's truck off to the right he's a good guy looks like he's probably going to Kenora as well he's got a step deck with a riser and what is this Rick, you're blocking the whole parking lot, man. <laughs> That's okay, I can get around. I got room, I got room. I'll just go around. <laughs> there she was. It's beautiful. Let's not waste any time, let's get hooked up, let's go. We got a long day. may be old, but she still does the job. Oh yes, yes, yes. Come to life, my friend, my old friend, come to life. There you are, a little bit chilly already. Yeah, a little bit harder to turn over, I can tell already. It's getting colder. It's not cold, cold yet, believe me. This is still hot for Manitoba, but uh, it's getting to the point where, uh, you know, another couple of months, we're gonna have to start plugging her in for the night. Tis the season, signs along the road everywhere we go. By the time you watch this, uh, the election will all be over. We'll see what happens. I wonder how Kenora looks. I wonder if it's still smoky out there. Remember, what was it, a couple of months ago now we were in Kenora and the visibility was like a quarter mile because of all the smoke from the wildfires? And now it's cleared up. And we got all the rain we needed yet, so everything turned out. Everything turned out good. Eastbound and down. Empty and trucking. An empty step deck behind us. About an hour and a half or so, maybe two hours to Kenora. And it won't take too long to load and tie it down. It's quite simple. And I haven't quite looked at how long it'll take to get back to Winkler from there. I'm guessing two hours back here and then another two hours to Winkler. So probably a four hour drive from there and then a two hour drive back to the yard after we're done unloading there. So it'll be
it'll be two, four, six, eight, eight hours of driving today, approximately. So not quite a full day. Not quite a full day according to our e-log. <laughs> a full day according to me, though. I'd still like to be home for supper. Just on the Manitoba side of the border. Always wondered what's what's in that building over there. I think it's like a tourism museum thing. Here's the Manitoba sign off on the left, so we're just about to cross over into Ontario. Oh yeah, they got the Ontario. Ontario gets two signs, just in case we miss this one. Welcome to Ontario. Open for business. Are you though? Are you? Funny, they left those signs up over the past year. <laughs> Thought Yoda might have, you know, covered that up, but now they left them open for business. And we've got a little rest area right. You know, I'm gonna turn into this rest area here. I've got to go to the bathroom. That coffee went right through me. Let this guy pass me. I know he wants to go faster than me, anyways. He's got two lift axles. Fancy. I can get in here, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, trucks this way. They built this a couple of years ago. It's actually a really nice rest area. I don't know why that guy's parked back there. Well, maybe he got here late at night. I used to, I usually like parking along the side too. It's, it's a quieter sleep that way. There we go. I'm going to park back here too. That's what this line is for over here. This is all parallel parking on this side. All right, I'm going to go check the tires. And we'll got to clean this windshield again. Man, you clean it one day and the next day it looks exactly the same. I got to see how far Winkler is from Kenora. Let's uh, check this out. Uh, Winkler. Directions to Winkler from Kenora. How long is it gonna take? Come on, speak to me, goggle. Finding bastard, there it is. Okay, so, three and a half hours it says. How many kilometers? 300 kilometers, okay. So it's not as far as I thought. I thought it was gonna be four hours. Good, good, good. We have to make sure we get there before they close tonight. Okay. There's a wasp flying around my mirror here just on the other side. Doesn't take long. Doesn't take long, you just gotta stop for five minutes and all the wasps start swarming towards you. Man, this windshield's dirty. I didn't get a chance to clean it yesterday. <sighs> or I didn't take the chance. At the end of my day, I just sort of focus on getting my stuff into the pickup and going home. I need to get this windshield clean. I'll do it, I'll do it, don't worry, I'll get it done. I wonder what's in here. I've never been in here either. I've never seen it open before. They just built a building and it's never been open. Ontario Border Park Rest Center. Maybe it is open, I don't know. Welcome to Ontario, thank you. You're so kind of you to put up your sign there just for me. Look, there's a camera over there. They're watching us, watching them. Let's go. Welcome, 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 Ontario. The most populated province of the country. But you don't get to the populated part for two days driving through this first. The mo some of the most desolate areas of the country. This is Northern Ontario, what they would call Northwestern Ontario. The road like this, it's exactly like this for about two days of driving before you get down to uh, southern Ontario, where the people live.
Well, I just passed my buddy Anthony in his truck. Uh, looks like we got some easy loads to pick up today. Not very complicated. Quickly thrown on the trailer and easy to tie down. It's just up ahead here, just on the right. I don't know if you guys remember when we picked these up before. Oh, we got the big OPP right there. And they're classic cop car colors of the white doors. <laughs> Ontario has their own provincial police. Am I gonna go? Am I gonna go? Are you gonna wait for me? It's my turn? Okay, I'm gonna go. Manitoba doesn't have our own provincial police. Uh, we're not, uh, we don't have that big of a population. So we have uh, the Royal Mounted, <laughs> the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. It's our federal police that are uh, being used as local police in Manitoba. They sort of operate at all levels. They operate at the municipal level, the provincial level, and the federal level. I guess it all depends what, uh, I mean, they're all federal, but they operate at all levels. They're the red coats. In their traditional uniforms, you'll see them in their like bright red coats with their weird puffy pants and their like trooper hat, the RCMPs. They don't ride horses anymore though. We have upgraded, which is nice to see. Uh, they, they have cop cruisers now, exactly like the United States. They're mostly going towards SUVs now. Uh, they have a lot of, uh, what are those, Ford uh, Explorers? Is that what they are? Ford Explorer? I don't know. They, they like the SUVs. They can fit more stuff in them and uh, they're four wheel drive for in the winter time and stuff. And we have a lot of rural land in Manitoba. And so uh, they need to have uh, the ability to get across the rural land. Anyway, that's how it works up here. Some cities have their own police, like Winnipeg obviously has their own police force. Winkler, I think has their own force. Morden has their own. St. Anne has their own. But for whatever reason, Steinbach still doesn't have their own police department. I think they should have a city police department. Bring in officers that are local, that understand the community, right? That are born and raised right in Steinbach. Because the RCMP, they're great people, but they're all born in other parts of the country, usually from other provinces not always as familiar with the local uh, situation and stuff. It would be nice to have a little more local policing, but hey, that's just a topic for another time. That's a topic for another channel. We're here to pick up some of these culverts. I'm gonna bring them on down to Vancler. I'm gonna take you guys with me. Wonder which load is ours. There's the forklift that's gonna load us. I wonder if it's like this one here. I'm gonna park right here. Yeah, I'm gonna park right here. Oh, there he is. He's gonna come meet me. All right, guys. I'm gonna get this on the trailer, get her tied down, and I will talk to you in a little bit. Got off. Got on a little rabbit trail there talking about policing around here. Well, you guys probably don't even care. On duty, loading cargo. I am here. Let the government know. That way they stay off my back. Okie dokie there now, okay. Oh, I need my hat. Oh, I'm not a professional trucker if I don't have my trucking hat on. There you go. Now they'll take me serious. Okay. He's still over there doing something. He's busy. So, uh, I guess I'll just wait here. I don't think I'm gonna need the riser. This is the trailer I took, step deck tandem. And I had to make sure I brought a riser along just in case they need to put something across here. I don't think I'm gonna need it. From what I saw on Anthony's load, uh, it looked like it was just gonna be on this lower deck, but I have it anyway, just in case. And uh, we'll see what they got for us. I'm excited. I love trucking. I always get excited about trucking. I gotta take this sweater off, that looks hot. Guys like my shirt? 
My wife got it for me. Turns out I'm gonna need a different hat. Gotta make sure my brain doesn't fall out while I'm here. There he goes over that way. And that's my whole load. Watch out, this is gonna take a long time to tie down. Whoo boy. This is gonna take three whole straps, three of them. So I'm gonna do two over from this side and then one over from that side in the center. So it sort of, you know, does the thing. I bet you I could even belly wrap the center one or maybe even the two edge ones. I'm gonna see if my straps are long enough. I'm gonna throw it over and see if I can wrap it around winch it into both sides and belly wrap them that way they for sure for sure won't even move a millimeter all right let's get to it i'll show you what i come up with in a bit so the other day i moved a nice jeep srt8 into the city and uh, i have all of these uh wheel straps that i forgot to get back to the yard i gotta bring them back yet but now they're in my way because they're on top of all my regular straps. Big mess. There's no real way to roll those up neatly either. I'm going to take the longest straps I have. They should be what, 35 footers? Eh, it doesn't say. I don't think it says. I'm going to see if I can belly wrap it. I don't know if they're long enough. Let's hope. If not, we're creative. We'll figure something else out. It's the thing about truckers. We're creative people. We can figure out how to tie down a load. You give me a load, I'll tie it down. All right, so what I mean by belly wrap is I want it to go over and around back to here, and then this side will go around to there, and then we winch it in on both sides, sucking the load down and together. Know what I mean? I'll show you. Duh. Here. Okay. Right the, end. the only other place we could. Let's throw it over first. And this side. Toss under here. We'll grab it from the other side. Here. Okay. You fold this side together like this so you can winch it into the strap here. This side's got to go to that side. I don't know if we're going to have enough. Might not be long enough. We'll have to see. Well, yeah, I think this might work. I think this might work. So this goes down into here. Back to the other side. I'll take you with me this time through my shortcut. Okay. Twist it here. Yeah, it's okay. It doesn't matter. This goes down to here. Well, I've just barely enough. Just barely. Just barely. Which. So, now as you can see, it goes over and under to there, and then the other side comes around to here. We're gonna winch it in on both sides. And then it's pretty obvious, eh, how 
those two straps will hold the load down but they'll also hold it together that's what you do when you have round stuff like this like it shouldn't roll because it's banded but you never want to just trust those bands you want to be able to uh, prevent it from rolling one way or the other or moving on the deck and that's how you do that I'm gonna do the same thing on the end and then on the middle I'll just do one right over the middle just to hold it down from bouncing in in the center it's a very light load it's probably only I don't know 1500 pounds maybe got to remember to return these today when I get back to the yard so they're not in my way anymore safe and out of the way now so this is what we uh, we're talking about it's all tightened down now got that wrapped up up front got one just over the top in the center and wrapped up in the back it's not going anywhere that ain't going anywhere so now it's about a three three and a half hour drive back into Manitoba to southern Manitoba above North Dakota someone there needs these And we're the people for the job, me and you. Saving the world one culvert at a time. All right, boys and girls. Took us about 45 minutes since when we stopped to when we are going again. From when the wheels stopped rolling to when they started rolling again. I should say it that way, it makes more sense. I'm gonna go all the way around here. Or can I turn around in this little area? I bet you I could turn around in here. I bet you I could. I got a very sharp turning truck. Uh-huh. 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 No problem. No problem, man. Oh yeah. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, so I got my GPS set for where we're delivering between Winkler and Morden. Three hours and 27 minutes, Google estimates. And I, it's usually pretty accurate. It's pretty impressive, actually. And Google's usually accurate. I mean, they're not accurate with everything, but with the maps, they're doing pretty good. We should be arriving there at 2.24. Let's account for maybe a bathroom break. And we should arrive there at about 2.30 p.m. Let's see how accurate she really is. Anybody want a school bus? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna grease this hood right now because I got my greasable here. I'm gonna show you how it works. You hear that? You hear those chickens under my hood? We're gonna get rid of those chickens right now. Right now, on the vlog. I brought my bull snot with me just for this. Okay, bull snot, greasable. Okay, I got the visible right there. Don't pay attention to my dirty floor, okay? It's a mess in here. Okay. Get my gloves. Open the hood up. Bull snot, heavy duty metal lubricant. What does it say on here? Use on accelerator, linkage, bearings, brake service, linkage. Radio antenna, cams, gears, hinges, hood locks, door locks. Excellent for general marine use because of high resistance to rusting and corrosive action. Home and office, use wherever, metal sheets, metal meets metal. Windows, garage doors, hinges, faucets, lawnmowers, bicycles, toys, garden and household tools, fishing reels, guns, filing cabinets, office equipment. Oh boy, there is a whole world of uses for this stuff. Okay, and I'm part of the Bull Snot Posse. So you can get this stuff in the US. It's coming to Canada January 1st. You can find this stuff at like Bass Pro, uh, most truck stops, but I know Bass Pro has it for sure. Cabela's. Okay, let's uh, shut this engine off for a second here just so that I can uh, talk to you. Gotta bring my vacuum to work next, I think. Okay, so what's squeaking is when, you see those hood mounts way on the end over there? 
when they rub on this here, it goes <laughs> like a bunch of chickens. <laughs> so how do I use this? Uh, all in, in all weather, multi-purpose, thick, water resistant grease. White color helps indicate lubricated areas and reduce the staining. And it comes with one of these fancy little sticky things, but I'm not gonna use that today because I'm just spraying it onto that there. Let's see, this one's got a little metal ball or something in there. Okay, bull snot. Okay. Put it on there like that. What do you guys think? You think it's gonna work? I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna get up on this one for this one. Okay. Let's see this. Oh, it's angry. Oh, it smells good. Oh, I love the smell of chemicals. That's great. Okay. So that's over there. That's over there. And that's where the hood should be squeaking on there. Should we put some on that as well? I don't know if I can reach that. Ah, that'll be good. Okay. There you go. Ugh. That should fix it. The only other place the hood touches is the frame in here, but that's not where it's squeaking. All right. Okay. Are the chickens gone? Let's see what happens. I might have to give it a, a second bull snotting. Yeah, it's called greasable. You go check it out. You can get it on Amazon, I believe. You yeah, better uh, make sure of that before I tell you. Go check, see if you can get it on Amazon. I'm pretty sure you can. I'm sure uh, Mr. Brown, the owner of this, will be in the comment section. <laughs> he watches the videos. And he's been telling me to give this greasable a try for a long time. And what I want to do is I want to get our company on bull snot as well as soon as it's in Canada. Because we use a different lubricant as you saw in my past video for uh, lubricating the roll tights. Right? And they ask me to lubricate them every time I have them. And I pull them a lot. I deal with them quite a bit. So I, I, I'm always the one to grease them usually. And I'd like them to start using this. So uh, it's going to be available in Canada next year. I'll see what I can do. But uh, if you want to. I'd recommend this. Now let's see if the chickens are gone, okay? Put that back down there where it's safe. I built a little uh, holder for my bull snot underneath there. But uh, I will admit my, where'd it go? My floor is still a little dirty in here. It's a work truck, okay? It's not a show truck. Okay. Okay. Let's see if the chickens are gone. So far, so good. Let's get onto the road here and see what happens. Hit some potholes, shake it around. Head west on 9th Street North towards Scramble Avenue. Quiet Google, let bull snot do its work. The chickens, they're gone. 600 meters, turn left onto Rupert Road, Veterans Drive. Okay, Google, you don't know where you're going. I'm going straight. Yeah, the chickens are gone. Ha, it worked. Just one application. Now, the test is to see how long it works. Let's see if I ever have to do it again, or if, you know, if it lasts a week or lasts a month. We'll see when the next time is. If, you, if I don't mention it again, that means that I've never had to redo it and that it's just continued working. That is awesome. Oh, it is so nice and silent and quiet now. Oh, Mr. Brown's going to be happy hearing that. Products work. You saw it, unedited, I didn't cut it. You saw exactly how I did it. They're telling the truth. So much.
much construction here in Manitoba and they put these cones so far to the this side that we've had to hit the gravel a couple of times to get around them and it's a huge ledge like here I'm gonna have to I'll just barely make it past Whew. it's a big drop it's probably like at the at one point back there it was about a six inch drop onto the gravel and it was soft gravel too and the trucks were sinking in I don't know why they put the cones so far this way but wouldn't make that big of a difference if it was a paved shoulder or even like a, a packed shoulder but that's just loose gravel there I don't want to sink into it and get sucked in you know you gotta be very careful sort of just sneak through here At least they're paving it, you know? And they are gonna be paving the shoulders. The speed limit going through here used to be 100 kilometers an hour, which is 60 miles an hour. Uh, they're gonna be lifting it. Once the shoulders are paved, they're gonna be lifting that speed limit to 110 kilometers an hour or uh, 70 miles an hour. I think the speed limit should be 120 across the prairies at least, maybe 130 even. I mean, just south of the border here, same terrain in the U.S., speed limits are 80 miles an hour, which is 130 kilometers an hour. It's just long, straight drives. I don't know, just my opinion. We're all done with this one today. And we're hooked up to this one. This one's for, for tomorrow. I'm going up to Arburg tomorrow and I'm going to get her all hooked up and ready to go today so that there's less to do in the morning. I believe this is the same trailer we had yesterday. I emptied it so I'm going to go reload it. I'm not sure where that load's going yet. Somewhere in the States. We'll just do a little pre-trip on it. A little mini pre-trip on it now. Oh no, this isn't the same one. This is the one with the backwards wiring. That's right. We had 603. This is 605. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, let's do a little mini pre-trip right now. I, guess I still got to do the pre-trip in the morning because you don't know if anything's going to break overnight or anything, but... Yeah, at least this way I know I'm ready to go for the most part. <laughs> 